inhaling and exhaling because of God we serve so we have a call to worship he's just been too good to us he's good and as we continue in our call to worship we would be reminded 
that this is a time of prayer and praise to our Father. The scripture we love to read in this call to worship is James chapter 4 verse 7. It simply says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our hands in our submission to your will. We resist the devil. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, we ask that you will cause Jesus to magnify himself in our midst. Johnson, Sister Heidi Myers, Sister Cynthia Kendrick, Brother Willie and Sister Patricia Fairbanks, 
Sister, Sister Gwendolyn Thomas, Sister Alberta Bowen, Reverend Theodore and Sister Mary Johnson, Brother Michael Hazel, Brother Nicholas and Sister Andrea Gidget, Sister James Edder Wallace, Sister Latour Smith, Sister Harry Wallace, Reverend Fred King, Brother Adrian Lambrick, Brother Herbert Fishpatrick, Sister Mir Miriam Ruth Newson, Cor Clayton, Jennifer Rainey, Reverend Matthew Quarterman, Quentin McCall, Daryl Stringfield Jr., Vanetta Jackson, Sister Michelle Walker, Brother Carlos Robinson, Linda Wright, the Hill family. Cheryl Cox, Sister Ramil Howard, Bobby Tucker Jr., Vanlicia Sutton, Brother Ari Goodwin, Brother Michael Sutton, Lois Smith, Sister Melody Paper, Sister, Tapley Sister, Sonia Queen, Ray Hobby, Brother Quentin Wallace, Deacon Andrew Scott and family, Sister Desha Pater, and family, the death of her brother, and Brother Bentley Porter. Before we go in prayer, our morning Sunday school lesson shows us and reveals to us that God works in all of our situations. The situation may be toxic, it may be hard burden, it may be heavy, it may be stressful but understand that God works in all of our situations we need to believe that God has everything in control it may not feel like it it may not look like it it may not smell like it but God has everything absolutely everything in control so we can go to him in prayer we can pour out to him in prayer we can fall on our face to him in prayer and we can tell him everything everything that is going on Eternal God, our Father, we come in this intercessory prayer. First recognizing that you are God. And besides you, there is no other. Father, our hearts is heavy. The burdens has become heavy. And Father, we just don't know how to to even pray sometimes in this heaviness of burdens. Our loved ones who are sick, we understand, Lord, that you have the doctors that you have given to them to minister to them. But ultimately, God, you are the great physician. 
and our hope is in you and I ask father that you will prepare our hearts for the results that you've given us we realize God you are the author and the finisher of our faith our hope is in you Lord our trust is in you Lord so God we ask you that you forgive us for our trespasses against you forgive us for our iniquities towards you forgive us for our follies forgive us for our trespasses lead us not into temptation Lord God but deliver us from evil we love you Lord but the more we learn about you you love us more so we lift these names Lord on this prayer list you know each one of them you know the number of hairs on their head have mercy today Lord Strengthen us today, Lord. Bless us today, Lord. As we recognize your love and your sustaining love, your sustaining provision, we are so grateful and thankful, Lord. Thank you for giving us the access to the throne to come to you boldly. give you our prayers but not only to give you your prayers but to listen to you Lord thank you for the privilege thank you for the blessing thank you for your faithfulness thank you Lord for your righteousness towards us God we give you praise we give you honor we continue to lift these names that is on this intercessory prayer list. We submit them in your hands, in your care, and in your provision, Lord. Have your way, God. Bless them now in the name of Jesus. And for Jesus' sake we pray. Amen.
when you look back over your life and think. I just say, look, I say, think. Think so. The past three years, we've had people leave here. We've had people go home to be with the Lord. But the Lord kept all of us here to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's enough to worship him. You saw that from your guts, then, Dick. He is my everything. And I like when you say, well, I like that part, Dick. Thank you, Dick. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you for reminding us. It's because of him that we are here today. My, my, my. got a way of removing conflict yeah. settling things down so we can learn about him that's right, that's right. he's just got a way of doing it yes, he he's got a way of doing it church I'm here to tell you well I'm, I'm going to get to the text at hand yeah yeah take your Bibles and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 Verses 6 through 10, verses 6 through 9, we're going to read responsibly. When we get to verse 10, we're going to read it all together. Amen. I, I remember years ago before I used to have to introduce Dr. Gregory. And somebody said that uh, uh, he had so many titles, he was Reverend, Doctor, Bishop, Deacon. Reverend E.C. Gregory, Ph.D. Now I don't have to introduce him. I just say good morning, Pastor. Hey, hey, yeah. That's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. All right, all right. Text, the text. Yes, sir. 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 6. I'm sorry, yeah, I got it first. I'm excited right now, y'all. Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 2. Um, chapter 1. Verses 1 through 10. 1 through... <laughs> Don't you do that no more, man. Don't you do that no more. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try it again. Can I try it one more time? Help me out here now. Help me out. 2 Timothy uh -huh. chapter 1 uh -huh. verses 6 through 10 yeah. Amen yeah. We're going to read verses 6 through 9 responsibly in right. verse 10 all together Amen. 
text says, Wherefore I put thee in memory, in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou uh, partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. All together. Saint Joseph, the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God it shall stand.
should cease to have power. I'm telling you. I think that was one of the first songs that I learned to play when I was a little kid on the piano. And, and hang on, but boy, I tell you, it still brings back memories. But it is one that will always have power. Always have power. Father, forgive us of our sins. As we come in your presence, we pray now, God, that as we are confessing our sins to you, that you are faithful and just to cleanse us and to make us anew. Pray now that as we come to your moment, that you would fix this flesh to where it would be your instrument. Speak to your people. Speak to hearts. And Father, then we pray that your Holy Spirit would do his work. Bless us now as we lift your son Jesus and as he glorifies you. Bless us in this moment. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all of your saints shall say together, Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. I want to gently bring to our remembrance the love that we have at St. Joseph. And that as sometimes we kind of overlook it. Sometimes we kind of like slide to another side. But God always fixes us to where he brings us back to the center. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I, I, I'm sure that you recognize that I had Reverend Fisher to call out when he called uh, Pastor Curry's name, that he specifically said Pastor Curry. Yeah. Now, th there's a reason. If you have your Bibles, turn for a moment. This is not my sermon, but I yeah. want to nail this into your spirit so that we can not think that we're more than somebody else, Amen. but that God is overall. In Romans chapter 11, this is a verse that has kept me focused for years because I found out in the midst of it that, uh, that, 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 that God's in control, Amen. not us, not even what we do, even if it wind up being something foolish. God is still in control. Amen. Yeah. I, I want you to look at verses 28 and 29. And it reads, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. In verse 29, that's where I want you to mark it. For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. It is irrevocable. And so in, in being sure that we stay straight, with what God wants us to do, we, we, we have been laxed a little bit. And, that's, and the reason I'm saying that is because I really want the church to be in prayer. This prayer list is not a plaything; It is for real. But it starts off with us being real. So one of the items that we're calling out on this prayer list is for Pastor Richard Curry. Amen? Amen? Because I believe that if we pray fervent enough yeah. in honoring God's elected, anointed yeah. person, and, and all, don't get me wrong, everybody on the prayer list is anointed and is precious and of the election. Yeah. But I believe that if we do that, then God will show his hand. God will bless us and show us that no matter what man says, God is over that. And so going forward, being that he is our brother and that he is the, the, really the senior brother <laughs> as far as the ministers are concerned up here, 
that we do refer to him as Pastor Richard Curry. Amen. And when we lift him in prayer, we're lifting up a pastor. God is using him, I know, wherever he is, because God does not change his mind on the gifts or the calling. But I believe that God hears our prayers. And we do need to show due respect for those whom God has touched. That's right, God's man. Amen. Now that's all I'm gonna say about it. Who is that, uh, the, the, uh, uh, Gump, Forrest Gump? That, that's, that's all I got to say about that, you know, man. Do, do with that. Again, also I want us to lift up Brother Fairbanks. Lift him up in your prayer, you know, that God would uh, touch him, touch his body, heal him, bless him, strengthen his wife. Because at times like this, we need to see God's hand in action. And I know that he's able. The God that we serve, he is. He is. No matter what we think, God is. Amen. Doesn't matter how you may let your mind go a different direction. Doesn't change who God is. Amen. And being that he is, he's able. Amen. And for the babies, if they want to shout, let them shout. Amen. Amen. Don't 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 be wrestling them down or whatever. I saw the little fellow want to shout, but <laughs> I'm just teasing, you know. But but Pastor Rim used to say, and I really believe that the way that you know that a church is alive is when you hear babies crying, and I believe that. So in here in at this church, don't be muzzling them. Don't be trying to to wrestle them down and tie them up. Bind them, none of that. Let, let, let them be children. Teach them the right way. But, but you know, they're comfortable. Ain't, ain't nobody being bothered about it. If they get too loud, they know to turn my mic up. So, amen, amen. God is such a good God. Oh, he is such a good God. And he keeps showing himself over and over and over in our lives. And, and, and I've really learned to start praying for the church. Yes. You know, praying, praying for, for St. Joseph, praying for the, the saints here at St. Joseph. As I study scriptures and I see that as the calling has been placed, that uh, it, it is a responsibility that God has placed on me to, to be praying for the saints, to be praying for the people and earnestly looking to God for whatever it is that they're in need of. And, and, and so with that, I also ask that if, you know, whatever's happening in your life, please share it with the church. No, don't hide it. it. It really hurts my heart to, to hear by somebody passing by, uh, emptying the trash or whatever, that so-and-so is in the hospital or so-and-so is passed on or that, huh, what, who, which? You know, let us know. Yeah. That's what the body of Christ is all about. We pray for each other. We pray for each other's strength. Right. We pray and to intercede in, in each other's affairs. Amen. It is our business Amen. if your heart is broken, Amen. if your heart is saddened, if your heart, it is our business Amen. according to the word of God. Amen. So, so please, you know, uh, Pastor Rim has set it up wonderfully. You know, contact your deacons. And, and, and again, we, we are finalizing uh, the, the, the districts and so forth. We're having a deacons meeting this Tuesday night. So we should be at a point now to where we can finalize so that everybody will know who their deacon is, who they are to call, to be sure that everybody has their telephone numbers and, and wives, deaconess, uh, their cell numbers as well. Okay? Their cell numbers as well. Don't, don't beat them up when you see Sister uh, Roxanne calling for prayer. Amen? Amen. Let me stop meddling now and really get into what God has, has given honor to the Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father and to his Holy Spirit who at this day and time strengthens us and keeps us and to the men that are here with me on this podium, Reverend Gibson and Reverend Fisher. Amen. Amen. 
to the deacons of this great church, Amen. to the nurses, Amen. since I'm looking that direction, <laughs> God bless you, God bless you, to the choir, always a wonderful job, always, always. To the musicians and the director, God bless you. To the ushers, to the multimedia ministry, God bless you. I see you got part of me blacked out, uh, you know, but that's all right. That's 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 okay. Yeah. Uh, to uh, the hospitality ministry, Amen. to the deaconesses. Oh man, good Lord, don't let me overlook these beautiful ladies. Thank you, sweetheart. You know, keeping me out of trouble. Looking like Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> bless your heart. And to St. Joseph, my loving family, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. From our scripture lesson, I want to talk to us today on this, this topic. Okay. And, and by the way, multimedia, that, that, that's a change in the topic, the direction that I originally gave. It's going to be facing hardships. Right. The topic, facing hardships. So we're gonna talk about this morning, facing hardships. Right. And out of Second Timothy, Chapter 1, we're going to be specifically looking at verses 7, 8, and, and 9. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Amen. Facing hardships. The purpose of Paul's second letter to Timothy is the need for believers to show faithfulness in the face of hardship. This message that Paul sends to Timothy is not for him alone, but for all believers who find themselves facing the trials that this life presents. Too often we want to, we want the easy way out, yeah. Yeah. not considering the destruction this choice may bring. The Bible teaches us in John chapter 10, verse 10, that Satan comes to rob us of our yeah. victory, yeah. rob us of our peace, robs us of our joy. Now, when we talk about faithfulness, and as the scripture brings out this other word, fear, giving you a short definition as we're gonna to use today, faithfulness is trusting God at his word. For right now, let's, let's leave it there. There's a whole lot more, but at the, at the ground level, faithfulness is trusting God at his word. Yeah. Fear, is distrusting God yeah. Yeah. at his word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So when we allow fear to start to interfering with our life when we face hardships, yeah. we are sinning as believers okay. because you are saying out from your spirit, God, I don't trust you. God, you, you are lying because you're not going to get me out of this. So I'm worrying about it and I'm afraid to death and I have no comfort. 
And so God does not want us to be in that direction. The scripture tells us clearly that God has not given us, has not given us the spirit of fear. Nor has he allowed fear to be the driving force in our life. But look what he has given us. He has given us power. He has given us love. And most of all, he's given us a sound mind. And that's so important because if you were able to stand back and look at yourself at times the way you orchestrate things when hardships come about, you will look like somebody slap out of your mind. You will look at yourself and say, why am I making this decision? Why am I doing it this way? It don't even make bad sense. If you were able to step back or stand out of yourself and look at yourself when you start to making decisions by your earthly mind or your fleshly mind. God has given us a sound mind. As a matter of fact, the scripture tells us he's given us the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ and the heart of God. The mind of Christ and the heart of God. And so we should be living this life each day, learning how to turn everything over to God, how to be submitting ourselves to the Lord, to allow the sound mind that he has given us to come to fruition or to come alive rather than this foolishness that we do. This brother and sister is not acting right. Let's cut them out, cut them away, kill them, stump them, you know. That's not of a sound mind, no, it's not. not from Christ at least. That's right. Because if that's the case, how many of us would be sitting here today? First of all, I start myself, I wouldn't be up here. Amen. I can tell you that right now because the mind that I had when I was in the world yeah. as Greg, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll leave that alone. But I'm gonna tell you, that God has not given us a mind that will cause us the destruction and foolishness that we bring on ourselves when we disregard God in the midst of our decision making. So this morning we're talking about facing hardships. Faithfulness in the midst of hardships. Faithfulness while we are standing in the midst of trials where our hardships are about to overcome us. Yes. Now there are three things that I want to bring out, three things that we're gonna talk about. All right. Number one, God has given us his power. That's number one. He has given us, when he saved us, he has given us his power. Now let me say up front, those of you who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin, uh, for right now, you're probably going to have to just close your ears because none of this equates to you. Because if you're not a child of God, none of this will make any sense to you. But when the, but when the invitation of the church is given, I would encourage you to, to give your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Submit yourself unto him. And I'm going to tell you something. All of a sudden, these things will make perfect sense in your heart because it will be him who's opening it up and not this earthly mind that you have. So number one, God has given us his power. Number two, God has given us his love. God has given us his love. And we're not talking about feely, feely, warm, lovey stuff. We're not talking about that. We're talking about agape, which means doing the right thing, doing the godly thing, doing the holy thing. God treats us as we are his children, even while we're in the midst of our mess. The Bible says he even saved us while we were yet sinners, while we were in the midst of doing things that were satisfying our old father, the devil. God saved us. So his love supersedes all of that feely, feely, warm, rubby stuff. Because that kind of love will vanish as soon as you mess up. Then thirdly, God has given us his sound mind. And I'm going to tell you, that, that means more than you can ever believe or understand is having the sound mind of Christ. 
to be able to stand and face hardships and allow God to carry you through rather than you trying to drag yourself through it. All right, let, let's start off. God has given us his power. Uh, the first thing that you need to know comes out of Acts chapter 1, verses 8. God says that he has indwelled us with his Holy Spirit. He says he has given us power by indwelling us with himself. God says that we don't have to worry about the world overcoming us. We don't even have to worry about when we are truly being faced with Satan, that his Holy Spirit is greater than anything that's outside of us. With him coming now and living within us, we have the power to overcome anything that comes in our presence. That ought to be shouting information. That, that ought to have our hearts reckoned to the point of knowing that no matter what the bad news I'm hearing, that if I just pause for a minute, wait on the Lord and allow him to come, that he will have an answer and a way to carry us through. God promises that and he will fulfill that every single time because he has indwelled us with his Holy Spirit. That, that, that's the first thing. We have the power to overcome it. So, so, so don't worry about the junk. We have the power. Greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. There's nothing in the world greater than he who lives within us. We have the fullness of the God here. Think about it. We have God Almighty himself living within us. The fullness of the God here. God, Jesus Christ says, the Father and I come and we will make our abode in you. And then later in scripture he says, and then I will send the Holy Spirit and he will abide in you and he will seal you until the day of redemption. That is the fullness of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what does that say? There's not a single thing that can come across your path that can cause you distress. It only causes you distress because you're not using your sound mind. You're using this foolish mind that's being guided by Satan himself. And then look at verse 8. Verse 8. He says, be not ashamed of your commitment to Jesus. Be not ashamed. See, a lot of times we're afraid to even let people see Jesus in us. I know that on jobs today and as the world is getting, getting is that it's kind of rough to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. I do understand that, and I know that. But living your life and allowing Christ to be seen through your life, my brothers and sisters, that all of us can do. And as a matter of fact, that's what he's calling us to do. He says in the scriptures in Matthew 28, he says, as you go in life, make disciples. As you go in life. He didn't say go Bible thumping people or, or jumping up and with, with, with all kinds of neon signs. He says, as you go in life, allow your life to demonstrate and show the love of Jesus Christ. Believe it or not, to some people, you are the only Bible they will ever see. You are the only presentation of the Lord Jesus Christ that they will ever recognize. That, 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 that's pos probably possible for a lot of us sitting here today. That, that's our huge responsibility. So what does God says to us? He says, do not be ashamed of the commitment you've made to me. Don't be ashamed to let them see me living through you because that's why I saved you and that's why I left you here is because I want to do stuff through you so that I can pull others to the Father. That's what Jesus is saying. Then also, as we look in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, we talk about the sound mind. The sound mind speaks of self-discipline. That, that, that's, that, that, that's what the Bible's talking about, self-discipline. Allow the Holy Spirit to discipline you. You know, your mind may say, crack this brother to the white meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the Holy Spirit says, no, back off. Yeah, yeah. Greet him another day when you're calmer. Yeah. Yeah. It could be that I'm tied up, you know, it's time for me. I'm sick of this, so I'm packing my stuff and leaving. Holy Spirit may be saying, no, the sound thing to do is go into a separate room, get on your knees and pray and ask God to intervene. Yeah. 
A sound mind simply means self-discipline, which means that you are waiting patiently as you're talking to God, which gives God a chance to interact. Because I'm going to tell you something. God is real. The Lord Jesus Christ is real. The Holy Spirit is real. And if you would give him an opportunity to show it, he will come forth and show it. You see things in your life that you have never seen before if you would give him the space to be active in your life. In these schools today for young people, I, I know it's rough out there. It's much rougher than it was when we were in school. You know, but you, you've got to depend on the Holy Spirit to keep your mind sound because there's so much mess that's happening, it will have you barking at tree limbs. Yeah. That's right. But the Holy Spirit will keep your mind sound. Yeah. It is most important, mothers and fathers, that you introduce the Lord Jesus Christ to your children at a, at a young age because they are in need of the direction of the Holy Spirit now more than, than ever. As a matter of fact, these days and times, you hardly have anything to say about what happens to your children. Amen. You know, the world is in control of them. The world is, 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 is directing them, and they're telling you what you can't say and what you can say to your own children. So you have to rely on the Holy Spirit. You have to pray and say, Lord, you let the Holy Spirit become active in my child's life. They don't know you praying it, but God hears your prayer. And the Bible tells us that the prayers, the fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. You know, be surprised how many times that you missed a bullet coming in your direction because your grandmama was praying for you and had no idea she was doing it. Romans in chapter 8, verse 6, it says, for to be fleshly minded is death. Yeah. To be fleshly minded is death. In other words, to be making decisions by your fleshly mind, by your earthly mind, by your, by, by, by your natural instinct means death. And it goes on, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. That's what Romans, that's what Paul teaches us in Romans. And it goes on in verse 7, it says, because the fleshly mind is an enemy against God this fleshly mind is an enemy against God which says that when you're making decisions in your life and especially important decisions or decisions while you're facing hardships that, that you're really being an enemy against God if you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to be the one who's guiding you in that decision making and it's rough being a child of God and knowing that you're making yourself an enemy to God even at that moment this is what the Bible says about a sound mind. Sound mind. Then verse 8. So then those who are in the flesh, listen to this. For those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It didn't say sometimes or maybe. It says those of us who are making decisions in our, by our fleshly mind, by our fleshly mind, cannot make a decision that would be pleasing to God. Now that's, that's a heavy footprint. That should get us to really start to think, and that is if we are truly children of God and we're really wanting our lives to be guided by God, that we have to start to waiting and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us when we are making decisions, especially when we are facing hardships, when we are facing trials, because that's when Satan really has his playground. God allows him at times to do that so that we can learn where we are. God already knows where we are. But sometimes we think that we are more than what we are. And so God allows those hardships and those trials to come in our life so that we can find out ourselves where we are. So that we know that we need to be closer to God. So God is being holy and just and lovable, even allowing hardships to come in our direction. In John chapter 10, verse 10, again, John tells us as he writes, Satan comes to us to steal, to kill, and destroy. He, come, he does not come to bring joy and happiness. It may feel like it at, at that moment. 
but he does not. He comes to kill and steal and destroy. So what is that saying? That's saying that when we are making decisions with our fleshly mind, rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to be the guide, that we are allowing Satan to take control of our lives. And whatever those decisions are that we are making is going to be pleasing to Satan rather than to God. And brothers and sisters, this is the Bible. This is the Bible. You can say, oh, you wrong, that can't be, or whatever. All I'm presenting to you is what the Word of God says. Amen. Second thing, God has given us his love. That's the most beautiful thing that you can imagine, his agape love. Even when we were sinners, he was loving us. Even when we were all against who God is, God was keeping us until the day that he saved us. That, that God has always loved us. He didn't just start doing it. He loved us at the time that he created us in our mother's womb. God has always loved us. And his love is unshakable. And his love is, is, is what keeps us together. His love is what keeps everything together. Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 23 and following. The, 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 the crying preacher, uh, Jeremiah, crying because the, the people of Israel was so stubborn against God and he could see their stubbornness and, and they going back to idols and disregarding God and, and making decisions that was destroying the fabric of, of, of who they were. And he was constantly crying out to God. He says to us when he says, love of God speaks of God's faithfulness toward us. He says, the, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. It never ends. God will love us until we're in glory with him. It will never end. It will never cease. Second thing in that, his mercies never cease. His love never ends. His mercy toward us never cease. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. His mercy began afresh every single morning. When we are facing hardships, and we are praying, and Lord, help me through these issues. I know that you have an end that's going to be glorifying you. Help me, keep me patient while you work these things out. Because I know that at the end, which represents the next morning, that it's going to be refreshing and being anew. Nothing that God allows to come to your direction is meant to destroy you. Don't think that the hardship that you're facing is meant to, to just tear you down. God does not do that. He is not a, a sadistic God sitting up in glory and, and popping this on you and throwing this on you and laughing when you're acting like a nut. That's not the God that we serve. God is doing different things in our lives to strengthen us, to prepare us for eternity. Don't you know that we're going to be living in eternity with him? He's preparing us now for that eternal life. So we should stop running away from hardships, stop, stop praying against the hardships, and ask God to guide us through the hardships. Because as he guides us through the hardships, we grow stronger and stronger each day. And we find out that when mess comes our direction, it don't mean nothing because you know that God is so faithful that he's going to show up and take care of it. What's the phrase? He's going to show up and show out. That's the God that we serve. That's how he takes care of those things if we allow him to do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, God. Not only does God give us his power, he gives us his love. Not because of our works. That's the one thing to remember. It ain't because, or it is, excuse me. It isn't because, no, I like ain't better. It ain't because of what we do. It's because of him. His mercies come in our direction because of who he is, not who we are. Same thing with our children. When they're bad, mama still feed you. Don't, don't you? Mama still put clothes on you, no matter how bad you are. You know, well, as a holy father, yeah. he does the same thing yeah. 
So he grants mercy toward us even when we're in our mess. But I'm going to tell you something, my brothers and sisters. If we will learn to submit ourselves to him and allow him to take control of our life, that his mercies and his grace would be a lot more pleasing. Would be a lot more pleasing. It's because of the purpose that he's put into our lives. That's why he loves us so much because each one of us have a purpose. You have a purpose, you have a purpose. Every, every one of us has a purpose. God has placed a plan in every one of our lives. When he called us, he has called us for a specific purpose. It's wonderful when we find out early what that purpose is because we can become stronger and more active in the kingdom's work. But trust me, God will present each one of us sooner or later at the purpose that he's called us for. He is faithful in that way. He will not save us and leave us out there dangling along. But when we allow those hardships that come in our direction to do its perfect work, God will grow us stronger and stronger each time. So not only has God given up his power, and then he's given us his love. The most beautiful thing about it, he's given us a sound mind. Yeah. It, it, isn't that wonderful? We as believers don't have to worry about being in a spiritual crazy house. Oh, or right. that's, not, that's not how uh, well, me, mental institution. Yeah. That, 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 uh, we cannot be spiritually... Um, uh, how do you see it? You, crazy. Well, that's the best thing I can think of, yeah. That, that we all, when we become children of God, when we submit ourselves to God, he's given us a mind that is sound. Hey, haven't you seen children, young children, that we may say that are, are challenged to a little bit, but when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be so precious in their love for Jesus as they sing about him and as they interact in their little plays and so forth. Even the young minds know that as they look to their Jesus, that, that he will cause them to have a mind that is sound and, and, and will bless them at the, at the end of it. God wants us to have a mind to, or have the mind that he's given us, not a fleshly mind. Because a fleshly mind will eventually cause us awful, awful, awful disasters. To be spiritually minded means that we are alive and at peace with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you want to know that, 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 the, that, the, that the hardship that he presents to us, when we look at it straight on as we're praying to the Lord and he opens our eyes to it, don't you know that there's a beautiful blessing in the midst of it and at the other end of it? Isn't it wonderful to know that we have something that, that, that non-believers don't? Isn't it wonderful to know that we have a God that loves us so much that no matter what we are doing or where we are at in our spiritual walk, that he still talks to us? The problem is we just don't listen. We are so, we are so intent on just coming in our secret closets, those of us that do, and just start to begging and pleading for stuff and not listening to him talking to us. He has so much to say to us, and, and, but yet we won't listen. He's given us this sound mind so when, we, when he allows hardships to come our direction that we can learn from it and be strong. That's the God that we have. So my brothers and sisters, don't allow the, the, the turmoil of this world tear you down. Don't, don't allow it to have you walking around as if you've been beat up in an alley. God loves you. You're children of God. You're precious. You're beautiful. You are specimens that God wants to show to the world. No matter what's happening, as a matter of fact, you bless Jesus more when hardships are there and others know their hardships and they see you looking good and blessed. They then know that there's someone who's looking out for you. But you know what the beautiful news is? The beautiful news is that Jesus knew already the dilemma that we would find ourselves in and walk in this life. He knew that. 
That's why he told the father, look, look, father, if you would give me a body, I will go down and I will redeem your people. I will die for their sins. I will not cause them to return to you if you would give me a body. And God did it. God took a virgin and, and, and implanted his seed within that virgin. And Jesus was born into this world. And the Bible says that he walked in this world, and even as a child, they found him at 12 years old in the synagogues, just, just profounding the professors as he talked about his father and talked about his mission and talked about heavenly things. And then the Bible says he, 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 he was faithful in keeping the law all through his life, not, not missing, missing a lick, not, 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 not sinning at all. He was sinless all of his life. But then he came down to the last part of his life when he had to do what he knew what he came into this world to do. He, as a man, as Jesus, as he prayed at Gethsemane and looked into the cup, he says, Father, is there, is there any other way to do this thing? You know, it, it wasn't death that he was worried about. It, it, it was the total separation from his father. When he looked in there and he saw all, because he knew that the sins of this world had to be placed upon him. He already knew all of that. But he never could, never did phantom the idea of being separate from his father. Yes. Yes. But then, without the father having to respond, he says, nevertheless, nevertheless. let your will you, be done. No matter what I got in my mind that I think might be a right way, Father, let your will be done. Even Jesus, when he came to a point where it was a horrible thing to even consider the, the sins of this entire world upon him and having to be away from his Father, he even submitted himself and said, Father, your will. And, and that's, that's what he's wanting in your lives today. He, he, he's warning you to say, Father, I, I see the hardship. I, I see the mess that is, that, that is confronting me. And, and to be honest with you, Lord, a lot of it is my fault. Yes, yes. But even still, it's in front of me. And I, and I know that you can handle it. I have ways that I think that ought to work, but, but Father, let your will be done. You, you, you handle it. And while you are handling it, then I'm just going to be praising you and loving you and, and just going on with the knowledge of knowing that you are taking care of everything. That's, that, that, that's the plan that Jesus set up for us. He doesn't want us worrying. He does not want us anxious. He wants us trusting him. He did not give us the heart of fear. Fear, like we said before, meaning distrusting the Father. That's not the spirit he gave us. He gave us a spirit a faithfulness, a spirit to be trusting God in every de decision of our life. But here he was at this point to where the sins of this world was placed upon him. And they were mutilate, just, just, just mutilating him. Or oh, the Bible just goes on and how they, how they did him. They, you know, pulled his beard out and thorns on, on his head and blood coming down and beating him with cat of nine tails and those cat of nine tails they, it was a, a, a whip that had nine whips, it was one whip with nine ends to it and each one of them had broken bones and stuff like that in it so when it would hit flesh it would tear it open and that's what they were beating him with but the Bible says he didn't say a moment of word and the reason why he didn't, two reasons, one is that he knew that he had to die for the sins of the world. So he had no defense. Second, true enough, they were not his sins, but our sins was on him. So he was guilty. And the father was judging him instead of judging us. But they nailed him to that cross. They, they, they nailed him. They physically nailed him hand and feet to that cross. And they lifted him up so the world could see. They thought they were lifting him up in shame, but he was lifting, being lifted up, and, and as the Bible said, he was drawn as he was lifted up. When they saw the Son of Man dying, the centurion that passed, who was not a saved man, he was a Gentile, 
one of the ones who probably nailed the spikes in him passed him and looked up and says truly this must be the son of God no man can die like this that, 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 that even, even, even an unsaved man had to make that expression but on that cross he died on that cross he died and the Bible says they took him off of that cross and they put him in a tomb. It was a temporary location because he only needed it for a few days. But he was in that tomb bodily for three days, three nights. The Bible tells us that Jesus himself, however, was in the heart of the earth, still conducting business, still doing things. The Bible says he was reconciling the world to the Father. He, he was propitiating, according to the Bible, right. that big, big theological term. He was bringing everything back to the Father. He was correcting all that man had torn apart. But after he had finished what God had called for him to do, God looked upon him and saw that he had completed his task. And because every single sin had been answered and been taken care of, God woke his son up and raised him bodily alive. And then the Bible says for 40 days he walked this earth presenting himself to mankind, presenting himself to his, to, to his disciples, to his apostles, letting them see that true enough he was bodily resurrected. Even ate a dinner with him cooking fish by the seashore and told Peter, you know, hand me a piece of fish because I want you to see that I'm not just a spirit, that I'm flesh and bones. And he ate with them. And then after 40 days, the Bible says that he was lifted up into heaven. And the Bible goes on and said, there were two men that were standing there as, as the disciples was watching him being ascended into heaven. And, and then he, they said something to them that is saying the same thing to us. They said to the disciples, these two men, why are you standing here gazing at him going up? In essence, you got work to do. And that's what God is saying to each one of us. Because the end of the gospel, he's coming back. Amen. My brothers and sisters, don't let that be a side issue because that's, that's for real. He's coming back for you. For all of us who know him in the pardon of your sins. If you don't know him, he's not coming back for you. You have a place that you don't want to go to. But for those of us who know him in the pardon of their sins... He's coming back for us. That's the gospel. And then in Romans chapter 1, Paul said that's the power to salvation. That's all that we have to offer is the gospel. So if there's anyone in the hearing of my voice, be it here or be it through Facebook or whatever kind of way, and you heard the gospel, that's the power. We don't know what God does in there, but he does something. Amen. Because it is showing his power throughout time. But if you are being visited by the Holy Spirit at this moment, I, I, I beseech you, I beseech you to, to, to let Jesus come into your life. Receive him. Receive him. Your, your, your life will never be the same again. Because once he comes into your life, he promised that he will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. He says that I will not have my children begging for bread, nor his seed, if you would allow him to come into your life. Let us stand. Let us stand, please. If that gospel is speaking to you at this time, the church is extending an invitation. Please, just come. Don't try to fix nothing, just come. When Jesus did his teaching and his preaching, his invitation was come. 
He never said anything about leaving this alone, putting this aside, or straighten this up and come. He just said, come. He says, allow me to show that I am God in your life. Because most likely, whatever you need to put down, you've been trying to put down anyway for the longest time and couldn't. But he wants to show you that he can remove it from you. Come. Why don't you come? If there's someone here today who don't have a church home, the Bible warns us about being church homeless, as Reverend Ambrister loved to say. Jesus says, as he gave the author of Hebrews to write, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves, as, as many do. You need to be a part of a Christian fellowship to where you can grow. So why don't you come? As we yield not to yield not yield. Yield not to
Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for increase. I pray for increase. Territory. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. And even though we've gone through these formalities, the invitation is still given. Giving honor to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Pastor Gregory, pulpit, members and friends, good afternoon. My name is Sister Raheem, and we're here to acknowledge our visitors. Are there any visitors visiting today? Will you please stand and give your name and church affiliation, please? I know Brother Limbrick, he's taking care of his ministry. And, uh, okay. Come on up, bro. You know, when we uh, come on Sundays, yes. Okay, we uh, sit in the AC. His brother's out there in that heat, making sure that. Nobody's putting nails in your tire, yeah. keying your car, going through your glove compartment. Uh, <laughs> but I, I know him well enough to know three things about him. One, that he loves the Lord, he loves St. Joseph, and he loves his family. Uh, but recently we had a problem here at the church, a serious pest control problem. Amen? I'm not going to go into great detail as to what that was. Brother Limbick, we just want to show you our appreciation to you. We love you. Just keep it up. Thank you. 
Amen. That's that, that's for real. When he's around here during the weekdays. You know, making sure that uh, the church is cleaned and straight and doing a lot of stuff that he's not even called to do to be sure that uh, that we have a, a beautiful, clean edifice. So yeah, that's deserving. That's deserving. So glad to see you all today. And uh, I, I really ought to throw a special blessing out to teachers. Man, good gracious, I know that, you know, because of the way that your hands are tied by the, the system, the world system, it makes it difficult at times to teach like you want to teach, especially when it's about having your children to be Christ-like. Uh, I know the struggles that you're going through, so we pray for you and uh, that you would uh, uh, keep up the good work and, uh, that, uh, and also you, sweetheart. I know how much you love those kids and how you up at all times of night doing stuff and you know I mean a teacher's job is never done that's anybody that works with children that's a special task uh, except for sister Jackson you know so but anyway that's that's an inside joke for that all right. have we done everything okay all right well then, I see. No. Oh, 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 yes. Yes, sir. Yesterday, uh, we had uh, tree trimming again. I'd like to call out a few folks, if you don't mind. Brother Clinton Cobb. Willie Jackson. Uh, Deacon Bradley. And, jeez. Uh, uh, Getting all tongue-tied here. Deacon Luckett. And Willie Jackson, he always likes to let me get him up in the trees. He don't want to control the boom and everything, so he lets me play with him, jerk him around and stuff. And I want to give him special thanks, too. Amen. And Deacon Bacon also, I hope you're watching Georgia Donuts. Amen. 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 Oh, you got one more. Amen. Oh, Cobbs. Oh, Patrick, I forgot Patrick. brother Fitzpatrick. He yeah. likes to talk a lot. Okay. Uh, he tries to be a boss sometimes, but, uh, you know, we can put him in his place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also want to uh, let y'all know that uh, brother Bobby Tucker, he's on, on station. You know, he's been sick, you know, so I always like to let you know because your prayers are, are, are really being, being heard by God. I, I love to see when God has touched hearts and blessed the way he's doing. So, Brother Tucker, so good seeing you on station. That's why I sound so good today. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. With that, I think that we've done everything that... Uh, uh, so, I'm going to ask uh, Reverend uh, Gibson if he would come up and give us our benediction, and then we can head out from here.
such a beautiful day from the church school lesson to the facing the hardships. Breathe on us now, Lord. And you didn't give us the fear, but you gave us the power of love, uh, the sound mind. So bless us now. Help us to use that mind of Christ that you have given us to love one another. Then, thank you for the message today. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and ever. And let the church say Lord, I'm available to you. My will, my will I give to you. I'll do what you say to use me, Lord, to show someone the way. Yeah. Hey.